oh, that's a nice background. I noticed that one thing that I keep doing these days is painting the same image over and over, but in different styles. And it's something that I've been enjoying a lot. I feel like in these past few months, I've tapped into something that is closer and closer to my art style. I think that before I used to recreate images, like pictures that I took, for example, in a realistic way. And I knew that it's not what I wanted to do, but I just didn't know how to paint how I wanted to paint. But I feel like in these past few months, I've been stylizing my paintings more and more without it being a goal. I've been painting in a way that really pleases me and that is looser, more fun, more expressive. So that's what I want to do today. And today I was going through my stuff in my closet there. I have a bunch of art that I created throughout the years, all on paper. So I have a stack of paper and I came upon these two paintings that I did. These are plein air paintings that I created more than a year ago, both of these. I think that today I would like to recreate them, but in my new style, just see where it goes. So this first one I created while plein air painting. We went to a Montreal park and we sat there for two hours maybe. And I remember I was very happy with this painting. And now that I look at it, there's many things I would do different. I think I have a different workflow, but it's probably going to be an interesting painting to recreate. And this one I like much better. It was in Saguenay in the Bic. We stayed in this beautiful place for a couple of hours as well. And already I feel like there's a better focus, like there's more values. Here, you don't really see a, a big value range. So more contrast in this one. But I also think that if I were to paint this painting again, I would do it in a much different style. So that's what we're going to explore today and tomorrow. If I can, I'm going to take a picture of these images, put them in a the description so you could use them as reference as well. But if not, I'm just going to put a screenshot here and take a picture of these images or take a screenshot and you can use them as reference. So if you want to paint them in your own style, please do. It would be so much fun to see what we all can create using the same reference images. So uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to paint in my sketchbook here, but first of all, I'm going to start with putting a base layer. So I have a bit of paint left in this palette. And I also have some paint on these. So I'm going to try to do a base layer. This is something that I've been enjoying is having like a, a colorful base layer with just random splashes of color. You know, when there's a blank page, it's all white. Sometimes it can be a bit stressful to start painting, but I feel like when you already have a bunch of colors on your page, then I don't know, it feels easier to start painting. Anyway, so we're going to start with that. Now I have an idea of what I'm going to paint, but usually I do this step after I finish a painting. So I don't know what's going to go on that piece of paper in the future so i hope that it won't hinder me because you see already i'm leaving space for the sky but usually i wouldn't even think of doing that so i'm just gonna force myself to put some paint where the sky should be okay so i like this let's do the other page and then we're just gonna wait for it to dry and after we can start painting but for the other page, I want to use a different set of colors.
Okay, so I have my Neo Color tools right here, which I've been using a lot. I have a bunch of pencils in there. There's watercolor pencils, there's regular pencils, there are a bunch of different types of crayons. I also have my Derwent watercolor pencils right here. And if needed, I can take out my watercolors. So the paint here is not exactly dried yet, but I figured it would be fun to use my either my watercolor pencils or my Neo Color tools to try to sketch the initial shapes. I think it would be fun to use them on semi-dry paper just to see how the markers will behave. So I'm going to sketch roughly the shapes. So I think that the paper is a bit too dry for us to see any types of effects. If I were to use these pencils on really wet paper, then I would see the, the crayons kind of act like watercolor. But I think that now it's, it's, not, uh, it's not wet enough, so we don't see these effects. So I'm trying to stay very loose. And as you can see, I'm not exactly using realistic colors, which I don't mind. I don't use a lot of pinks usually, but I don't know for this one, I thought, I thought it could be nice. I decided to try it out. At first I chose the pink because I thought it would be a nice contrast color with the background. I didn't want to take anything too similar to that bluish purple that you see that's already on the page. So that's why I got the pink. And then I just realized that it was a nice color and it's something very unusual for me. And I thought it would be nice to explore. So I just continued with that. You'll see that pink becomes a very important color in this image.
see that in a couple of minutes I already created something quite interesting. So we're just going to keep building up on this and at some point I'm going to add some water to make some of the colors merge together but I really like this background here in the sky and in the water here so this I'm going to try not to touch it too much. Keep breaking them. Okay, I think I'm done with this one for now. So I will let it dry and I'll start working on the second painting. But if you wanna see the difference, here's the reference painting. And here's what I created. It took what, half an hour? Not long at all. So I'm gonna let this dry and maybe I'll add some details and go back on it after. But now let's start working on this one, on this page. So in these types of paintings where there's a house or there's something that needs to be a bit more precise, then I like to start with that just to set it in the painting, set it in the composition, and then I'm going to work around it to create the rest because for the rest, if it's not precise, like let's say if that tree is, is not exactly here, it's a bit, you know, I can move things around, but sometimes main subjects in a composition need to be a bit more precise or at least that's how i like to do them so i like to start with them make sure they're good and then we can continue working so i decided to use that lavender to create this house i've been really liking using lavender in my drawings lately There's things that I decided that I would not paint. So the windows on the roof here, I decided I would not paint them. And this little guy here and these benches, I'm not going to paint them. I don't want them. I don't know, they seem like a bit of work and I really want to keep this loose and fun and easy. So I decided why work harder? No. So. That's what we're trying. Now I'm just putting colors a bit everywhere. Patches here and there. And I'm soon, I think, going to add some water.
So for this one, I had a lot of fun playing around with colors. As you can see in the foreground, there's nothing very precise. It's just a bunch of grass and flowers. So I could pretty much do whatever I wanted, which is why I had so much fun with the colors. I tried to keep some of the colors and the shapes that you see in the background still present. So I tried not to cover up everything and use the shapes that were already there to enhance the image. But I just had so much fun and I played around with different textures and different layering styles and trying to preserve the contrast in the image or maybe accentuate it because I feel like in the original image the thing that is most lacking is the contrast so I try to enhance it and I think I did a pretty good job you'll see Let's put some water now and see what happens. After putting the water, I felt like I had lost a little bit of the grassy texture. What I liked about this image was all of the pencil marks that you could see, especially on the foreground. So I just added some more on top of that new background that we created with the water. So here it is for now. This is the reference image and this is what I created so far. I love it so much. So I'm just going to leave them to rest for the night and we'll come back tomorrow and add some final details. Well, it's already the next day. What a seamless transition. So on that day, I added a bit more color I worked on the details and I always like to do that, to leave a painting there for a night and come back the next day. I feel like I come back with a set of fresh eyes. I'm more easily able to identify what I need to work on, what I need to finish. So this is something that I do a lot. And yeah, I just added some details. I worked on accentuating some shapes, such as the sky and the trees. So what I like to do with these paintings where I already have a background in place is sometimes I feel like the sky and the trees kind of merge together a bit. So what I do is I, I put a layer of white pencil on top of the sky, which doesn't make it disappear. It just makes it a bit paler to make the trees pop.
This is the one that I created based on this picture. I really like how I did the trees here and I really played with some layering. So I put some colored pencils on top of the new color too. Since it's pencil on wax, it was hard to put the pencil evenly. So that's why we got these kind of lines. You see the blue is the pencil that I added. So it's not even and I really like that effect. So I did the same thing with that purple tree here. And this I left untouched because I really like the texture. And you can already see that it's a little path. The only thing that is a bit more detailed is the house, which I like because it's the focal point. And that's it. And I really like this color combination, this kind of fiery orange with that lavender. Love it. And then we have this side here, which is based on this painting. So different, huh? I used a little bit of a colder color palette, I would say. And the other painting too, it was a cold palette, but well, you had a bit more warm colors compared to this one. So this one, I used a bit more purples and pinks for the shade. And I really like the effect. It's really nice. And I like the texture that was already present. I left this water mostly untouched so you can see the texture here you can see the texture in the sky which looks like clouds it's really nice it looks like maybe the beginning of a sunset which could explain the weird colors that you see everywhere so that's it let's just remove this and i thought that it would be nice to recreate this one again but in a even simpler style a little bit like, let me show you, like this one here. In this one, I really focused on the shapes, so it's a bit abstract, but at the same time, you understand what's going on. So I thought it would be nice to take this one and do something similar to this. So let's try it. The first thing I want to do is select my color palette because for this one is going to be very simple. I want to use three to four colors, maybe a fifth for highlights, but something very subtle. I want to make sure that my colors work well together. I was thinking of using some acrylic inks. So I really like this phthalo blue green shade. I also have it in watercolors, so I might use watercolors. I also want to use my new color too because I love the texture. I think for this one I might go for a phthalo blue and this vermilion color that I've been loving these past few days. I think the mix would be quite nice. And what else? I still have to think about it, so I think what I'll do is that I'm going to do some tests on this paper and when I'm satisfied then I will start my painting. So I want to select a color for the rocks, for the grass, for the water and maybe like a darker color for these dark trees and we'll have to think about something for the sky because there's not much going on there. Unless we really cut it close like this, we exaggerate all of the shape's height so that we don't see much of the sky. I might do that. I think it would be fun actually, so let's do that.
Okay, so I think that these four colors are going to be my color palette. So let's just keep them here. In fact, I have three watercolors and only this vermilion. I decided not to use this one. But now I wonder. Hmm. <laughs> let's just see what we get when we use it in a bit of a different way. It's just a very nice color. Hmm. I feel like my color palette is pretty retro, which I like. As you saw, I finally decided to use my acrylic ink in phthalo blue-green shade. And the reason why is that I tried this technique in which I wet part of a paper and then I put some dots of paint in there. And I like the texture that I created so much with that color especially. So I just decided to use it and I really like it. I feel like it makes the water really special. You get that it's water, but there's this special interest about it so this is why i decided to use it and you'll see the color palette that i chose in the end it changed a little bit from what i thought i would first use and i'm quite happy about the final result color wise we're just talking color wise right now but i'm quite happy in general but as for the colors i'm quite happy with the choices that i made i think maybe that this color palette is a bit childish in the sense that it's a lot of primary colors. Usually I prefer using more like an analogous color palette. So having colors that are similar to each other, sometimes even a bit more monochromatic or like tending towards monochromatic color palettes. So this is something different for me color wise, but I quite like it. But this is why I decided to use a dark blue to create the trees because I felt like I couldn't introduce another bright color. I needed something more muted to calm everything down a bit because the energy level was high. Oh, and I hadn't planned on introducing a green originally in my color palette, but at this point I wanted a color to represent the grass, so I didn't want something super unnatural because I already had yellow and red rocks, so I think that's enough. So I worked a lot on color mixes for the greens. If I remember correctly, in the end, I mixed Potter's Pink and Sap Green from Daniel Smith. And I really like the result. There's a lot of granulation and color separation, so it's very interesting. So this is it. This is a different style. Something that I've been exploring a little bit. Well, in fact, it's my second painting in this style. But it's so fun to reduce an image to its main shapes. I find that it's a good brain exercise. You really have to make conscious choices when it comes to your colors. Here, I made a couple of changes. At first, I was supposed to put uh, iridescent violet in there. But after a while, I decided it wouldn't work because I only had the sky left to do. And I thought that I could use that iridescent violet for the sky but then I thought if I only use it in one area of this painting it's not gonna be cohesive so I just decided to use this same blue but in a more diluted way and this is what I got very happy about this result I think I'm going to have to explore this style a bit more and I know that this is not going to please everybody I know that it can be seen maybe as a more childish 
style, but I find that the simpler you go, the harder it is. So for me, at least it's a good exercise. And I feel like I'm going somewhere with this. And here I put the, the remainder of my colors that I had in my palette. I just put them on this page and I'm going to use this later for a background. This little drop here transferred onto this page because it wasn't dried, but I kind of like it. It looks like the sun maybe or a star something magical so i'm just gonna leave it there wait for it to dry though so that's it this is what concludes this video i hope that you enjoyed it i hope that it inspired you in some way and i hope that it gave you a different outlook on the artwork that you have already produced and maybe you're gonna want to redo one but in a different style if you do please let me know because i can't be the only one who sees how valuable of an exercise that is I feel like it opened up my brain in a different way. Redoing my own paintings or drawings in a different style is something that I've been playing around with for a couple of months, but I feel like it's the first time that I achieve something that is more stylized. So yeah, it's exciting, it's interesting, it makes me want to keep going and keep exploring, so that's all good. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. Like I said, tell me in the comments if you tried it. If you do post something on Instagram or whatever, just tag me. My Instagram is linked in the description. So if you want to go follow me and tell me that you came from YouTube, it would be so great. I will follow you back. And um, yeah, let's share. Share your artworks with me. That is it, guys. I'm going to stop talking now. I will wish you a good week and I'll see you soon. Bye. Take care.